Dory's short-term memory loss, in some ways, was something that we had to figure out a little bit on the first film, even if we weren't really aware we were doing it. And, and what became true was we watched it and reminded ourselves of what we did and didn't do in the first film, was that Dory has emotional memory. Um, and what that means is when she loves somebody, she remembers she loves them. She will forget their name, she will forget what you're talking about, she'll forget where you met, um, but she won't forget that she has a connection. And I think that's why at the end of the first film, when she has this heartfelt moment with uh, Marlon, it really resonated because it was basically her saying, like, nobody has stuck with her long enough to create that kind of emotional memory. And so for her, Marlon was the first person in a very long time, and then ultimately Nemo, um, that kind of allowed her to have those emotional memories again. And this film, um, we get to understand and see kind of a, a broader sense of what those memories mean to Dory and kind of what memories from her childhood actually are, do stick with her and have resonated with her kind of deep down throughout her life. Hank is a septopus. Hank is um, the begrudging kind of curmudgeonly uh, sidekick to Dory um, in this film. And he, all he wants is a ticket to get out of the Marine Life Institute and go to Cleveland. Um, and the reason he wants that is because they're about to release him back into the ocean. And Hank does not want to be in the ocean. He just wants to be left alone where he can be by himself and not have to deal with anybody else, and he's perfectly safe. Um, and we don't really go into what happened or why he lost his tentacle, but there's something there that, uh, that certainly has made him not want to go back out into the ocean. So when Dory arrives in quarantine um, after being taken out of the ocean, uh, she is tagged um, to go to Cleveland, and all Hank wants is that tag. So he goes to try to find her to negotiate, or frankly, to kind of pickpocket her um, and steal her tag. But Dory is a little bit too smart for him and is kind of on to him and starts to negotiate a trade. Um, and her trade is, if you get me to my parents, I'll give you my tag. Destiny and Bailey. Destiny is a whale shark. Um, and Bailey is a beluga whale. They are, if you will, uh, pool mates. Um, and they are both in the Marine Life Institute for different reasons, but both struggle um, with kind of um, a, a physical challenge. I think Destiny's physical challenge is that she's very nearsighted, um, and so therefore has a hard time navigating her surroundings and bumps into things a lot and doesn't swim very well. And Bailey is there because he's pretty convinced something has happened to his head, he bumped it very hard and he cannot make his echolocation work. Um, so they're both in there. Um, Bailey uh, is, is a more recent addition, I think, to the Marine Life Institute and Destiny has been there for a very long time. Um, in fact, Destiny's been there so long that she actually had a relationship and was friends with Dory when they were both very little and Dory was living in the Marine Life Institute. Ty Burrell plays Bailey. Um, and again, uh, Ty Burrell kind of has this charm in his voice. Um, you think he's funny and sweet and charming and never silly or stupid. Like he's got this kind of naive wisdom to him um, that I think really fits well with who Bailey was as a character. So Ty has this kind of also willingness. I mean, when we wrote, he has to make all the ooh sounds and um, you can imagine when an actor gets paid, I think it was the first session we had with Ty, and it was like, ooh, and it, he was like, ooh, ooh, and we're like, no, it's like a ooh, ooh, and then Ty like took it and ran with it. For me, as a producer, working with Andrew is a dream. I mean, because not only is he incredibly talented visually um, as a storyteller, but he also writes kind of these heartbreaking, charming, lovely, complicated characters that, you know, feel like they're, they're sitting right here next to you. Like you feel for these characters, you root for them. And when something happens to them, you feel for them. And I think that's the greatest gift you can give a film, you know, a, an, the greatest gift you can give an audience, I think, is to feel empathy for the character you're watching.